Affinity Photo has a unique feature to it that allows you to refine a selection that is by far probably the best I've seen. You can use it to almost pick pieces of hair off of an image and completely export those without problems. Obviously there are caveats with that. With any any image trying to get a full selection and remove a background, you're gonna have some artifacts, you're gonna have some background left over in the image, but Affinity Photo lends you a huge hand to get that done at, an, at a reasonable pace. Typically when I start doing a selection and removing an actual object from a background, in this case a lion, you'll notice there's a lot of frails, hairs just trailing, and that's super hard to get. Our nifty tool here, which is I'm starting with the uh, selection brush tool to give us a foundation going, and I'll just make a selection, and you'll notice it kind of magnetized to the actual edges. Don't worry about getting it to the actual edge. We can refine that. So you'll see that happen in just a sec when I finish this. If you are selecting and you want to deselect or unselect a certain section, there is a modifier key, option or alt on a PC. If you hold that and you want to invert kind of a selection a little bit, you'll just see it pop back like that. The same is true if you just continue that selection without holding the key, you'll add to it. So it's add and subtract as you see the different modes at the top here. For best use cases, I would keep the snap to edges on, although you can toggle that off. I'm gonna remove this just a little bit and then we'll be good to go. Okay, and of course you can adjust your brush size uh, to your heart's content there. I use the bracket keys to do that on key commands as opposed to using edit menu or something like that. So with the lion selected, we can go ahead and refine our actual selection. Doing so brings forth this overlay of different uh, parameters you can set just by using these sliders. These to me aren't exactly 100% useful, but what's really useful, I'm actually gonna zero those out, is the brush tool you get when you're using this mode. It's not exactly obvious until you hover over the image, but you'll see it there, it's a brush. Before I go on, I'll mention there are different preview modes. You can go ahead and make the background black, you can make it white, black and white, or transparent. Toggling between those sometimes helps to see what you have selected, what you don't. Uh, but for this instance, we'll just start by utilizing this cool feature where you can actually just paint these edges and it will do its magic and you don't have to do it all at once but you can just paint a section and let go it'll kind of refine that selection for you and if I'll zoom in here you notice those hairs peek through but the background is gone and you can actually so you notice these hairs here if I use the foreground here and go ahead and paint over that you'll notice it basically removes that refined mask. So we can go back and switch this back to matte and kind of toy with that section a little more if we don't quite like how things are going. So in this case, I'm, I'm okay with that. That little speck of hair isn't a huge deal. With any selection in, in hair, for instance, you're gonna have artifacts. That's something you kind of just have to live with. The secret is just to try to make it look as natural as possible. So the Affinity Photo helps tremendously with that. When I first saw this feature, I was pretty, pretty floored, I gotta admit, because it makes it so simple. So we'll continue down the image and probably call it good, minus a few sections here. It's a little rough, but we'll we'll leave it as is for now. I think we're good to go. So at this point, the output selection can be a mask, a new layer, a new layer with mask. By default, it's a selection. I like to make a mask out of it. Uh, so when you hit apply, it will create a new mask here. And the beautiful thing is you can refine this edge to your heart's content. Okay, so at this point we have our mask. What we need to do is select the lion layer. So command clicking that layer right on the thumbnail gives you a selection. You can also reselect it, but I would go this route since it's already defined. What we'll wanna do is invert our selection. So shift command I or invert pixel selection in the select menu. 
And now we can go ahead and refine this mask. So if we hit refine, uh, we should be able to go ahead and treat some troublesome spots. As you see, some of this red has gotten out in the, in the way here. We don't really want that. What makes it a little easier to see is if you do it black and white, you'll see the gray. So we can remove that, I believe, just by doing so. So we can remove this just by brushing in the foreground color. You'll see it kind of work its magic here. It looks kind of funky with the sharp edges, but it, the selection will do its thing as you just saw. So if you see just kind of splurges of this gray on the outside, that's what we're looking for at this point, just to kind of refine that selection a bit more. I'll zoom in and show you some more, see this stuff. And you can get as detailed as you like. I mean, obviously the more time you spend on this, the better it's gonna look. Unless you go too far. All right, so with that selection made, we'll go ahead and want to refine our mask a little bit. Right now it's still inverted, so we'll actually want to fill, go to edit, fill, and we'll want to use our foreground color. You can use custom here, or you can do primary. They call it primary. I'll just do custom just to show you that feature. In this case, it'll be black, because we want to eliminate that selection. And it happened in real time, which is nice. So there we have a pretty decent selection for a lion. If you were to want to add this on another image or throw a background color on that, you can go ahead and do so. Say we just add a square or something behind it. It's got a bit of artifact going on, but you can tweak that with color. You can, you can tweak it with kind of desaturating that edge or adding more color to it just to kind of give it some better effects. In fact, we can probably try that. When we add a selective color, we're going to add this as a like a child layer. So I'm going to drop it right by the side that layer. I'm going to zoom into that bit there. You'll see the yellows increase a bit. Probably get rid of some of the blacks. I'm just trying to focus in on these hairs because I want them to kind of appear as one more cohesive color. And then what we'll do is brush out this as a mask so we can add a mask to it. I think we can paint right onto it to get rid of it, which we'll use black for. So make sure your brush is black. A quick tip to change that, press X and it will toggle. So we got our little color effect going on. Just a small, subtle change, it's nothing crazy. But it's just on the edges I'm focused on. And again, we can tweak we can tweak this to our heart's content. But obviously a white background is gonna show that tremendously. Uh, if you were to darken it up, this should be fine. If we wanna change to say a darker color, like so, we should be all set. So that's how to refine a selection in Affinity Photo. As you can see, you can get as detailed as you want and you can make even hair come through and shine.